Hi, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to delve into your word, to learn more about you, to know more about you, to grow, to look more like you and to sound like you and to love like you. Father, bless us that these words that I share today may come directly from your heart and go directly to ours. In Jesus' name, Amen. So it's Epiphany. And our reading today from Matthew 2 verses 1 to 12 begins with a question from some wise men from eastern lands. And they ask, where is the newborn king of the Jews? Now, three days ago, we left behind us a year that um, was just so full of questions. Earlier, during the first lockdown, a man asked me, so where is God in this pandemic? All the deaths are occurring. Where is God? Luckily, he didn't want an answer. He just needed to ask the question. And I took it as a question from someone who's on, on a journey, who's looking for the newborn king of the Jews. And then recently I spoke with a woman who will be having cancer surgery soon. And she said, I keep praying and I keep hoping. And I keep praying and I keep hoping that she is someone else who is looking for the newborn king of the Jews on her journey towards discovering who it is she's been praying to. And they're not the only ones. There are a thousand other stories just like theirs. And they're your stories and they're mine. They're stories of struggle and despair, of courage and perseverance, of loss and grief, of joy and celebration, stories of longing and desire. They're the stories of our lives. And every one of these stories is an echo of the wise men's question. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? That question was at the centre of the wise men's journey and it had been with them for a long time. It had caused them to pack up and leave home. It had caused them to keep searching and watching. It gave meaning and purpose to their lives. It offered direction and it led them to the child. We may not use their exact words, but at some point in one form or another, we've all asked that question. Where is God? in my life. Where is God in this situation I'm in now? I need to see him. Where is he? Sometimes we speak it with calm confidence. Other times it's a frantic cry. Sometimes it's the prayer that we pray as we fall asleep. Other times it's the prayer on our lips as we awake. But it's always with us. It's the question that drives our lives even when we don't know it. It lives deep within each one of us. Saint Augustine said, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? That question is our guiding star, our guiding light. It illuminates the night skies of our lives it pushes back the darkness and points the way. The question doesn't seek information. It simply creates space for God to speak to us. It's less about what's going on in our heads and more about what's happening in our hearts. It isn't so much a question to be answered as a question to be followed. But that doesn't mean there's no destination. There absolutely is. It's the child. The star stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. To follow the question, rather than to look for a final answer, means that there are no end to the ways which God can reveal himself to us, how he can speak to us. It means that there is a star, a light, guiding and leading and drawing us to God in every circumstance we face. God is continually going before us, preparing places of his presence for us to enter into. And these places 
and in these places he makes himself known and available to us. There is only one God, but there are many places in which God makes himself present. There are many places, places of mercy and forgiveness, places of second chances, places of healing and wholeness, of beauty and generosity, places of wisdom and guidance, places of love and compassion, places of peace and consolation, places of strength and courage, life and hope. The epiphany of Christ, the revelation of Christ is not limited by time or geography. It's as real today as it was in Bethlehem those 2000 years ago. Throughout our life we journey, following the star from place to place, from one revelation to the next. And there is a place for each circumstance and situation in our lives. And in every single one of those places, the child awaits us. The star, the light is there for all to see. The only reason that Herod couldn't see the star was that he wasn't looking. He wasn't asking the question. He was unwilling to make the journey. He thought it was enough to tell the wise men to go and find the child and report back on the child's location. Herod only wanted information. He made no room within himself for God's revelation. What Herod didn't understand is that there can be no second-hand journey. We cannot search or question by proxy. God offers only first-hand experience. So don't settle for what the wise men saw. Go look for yourself. Ask the question, where is the newborn king of the Jews? Follow that star, follow the light, open your life and give God the opportunity to say, look, right here, right in the middle of your life, in every cir circumstance and situation, here is the newborn king of the Jews. Here I am and I love you. Amen.